All right, welcome, uh, gentlemen and ladies, to the uh, Asterisk 123. Like I said, I'm uh, impressed you guys made it in a little bit early this morning. So hopefully you guys weren't at the, the bar too late last night. We got a little bit of feedback, and maybe they'll uh, bump my vocals down just a, a tad. Uh, but yes, this is the uh, Asterisk 123. We'll cover, you know, this is a, a basic technical introduction to the Asterisk Open Source Project. So if you're uh, looking for a technical introduction to the Asterisk Open Source Project, you are in the right spot this morning. My name is Billy Chia. I work for Digium. And I uh, do many things marketing in the marketing department. So um, and uh, I wonder if we'll just curb that feedback just a little bit. There we go. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, have any of you guys seen the, uh, the recent videos we put out with, uh, regarding our Digium phones? If you guys have seen those phone videos, that's, uh, that's me on the phone video. So, in fact, these very phones are the phones in the video. So these are the famous, uh, if you go online and look on our YouTube page, you'll see the little scuff mark here, and that's on the video. Um, additionally, anybody here, uh, I'm just curious, has anybody here viewed the uh, Asterisk Essentials online training course? OK, we have a couple of done Asterisk Essentials. So that's, a, that's another project I've been able to work on. In addition to uh, the DCAP test uh, with my colleagues, we've um, you know, updated and revised our advanced training, our DCAP test. Uh, I do a lot of training, get to do a lot of things in marketing um, with our videos. So if you'd like to contact me, uh, beachy at digium.com, or uh, I'm on Twitter too. You guys can find me on Twitter. So in fact, I'd like to try an experiment this morning, if you will indulge me. I've, uh, I've set up a, a Twitter page here, uh, at Digium Training. And just because it's a large room, I, I like to field questions. So um, you know, maybe we'll do some questions today. And uh, what I'd like you guys to do is text in your questions. So if you have a smartphone or if you have a laptop and you have a Twitter account, you can uh, just shoot a Twitter at, to uh, at Digium Training or uh, you know, stick in the hashtag. Uh, Pound, uh, pound asterisk one two three, and I've also created this script, and I haven't tested it at scale, so there's nothing like a live demo, right? Um, if you guys would shoot me a text, I don't know if you guys can read that. My uh, my text number here is seven seven three two three four 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 eight six, so it's like seven seven three two digium. So send a text to digium. And what I'd like to know is just what it, what's your asterisk background? Are you a uh, you know are you an integrator? You guys have uh, you know maybe distributed an asterisk solution? Are you brand new to the project? Um, have you been working with asterisk for a while? Um, just what's uh, what's your kind of familiarity with asterisk? If you guys would would text or or tweet me in there, and then uh, we'll test out my script to see if it if it actually pops up in the feed. Oh, hey, well, nothing like a live demo. Awesome. <laughs> well, if you, uh, man, I can't believe they gave us no cell coverage in, in our room. How, how could they do that to us? Well, if you, uh, if you do happen to have Wi-Fi, I am personally connected on the, uh, there's, like, there's like an Astrocon Wi-Fi and the ones that are maybe like Cap N, Cap C. Do we know which is our, uh, our Wi-Fi for the room here this morning? Cap C, OK. Well, you guys can try it out if you get Wi-Fi in the smartphone. Um, you know, you can try that out. And maybe we'll come back to it, and maybe I'll field some live questions. But we'll, we'll find out about that. <laughs> so this is our uh, schedule this morning. It's a bit of a modified schedule. We normally teach our sessions here from, uh, you know, we normally go 9 to 5. But I want to get you guys out by 4 so we can head over to the very uh, you know, cool uh, exhibition hall. Uh, after you guys get out of the session today, we're going to, if you hang out with me all day long, this morning is basically going to be like a, a high level overview. So if you're, the, if you're the marketing guy, if you're the sales guy, you're kind of curious, what, what does Asterisk do? We're going to kind of cover some of those high level questions, some of the ways that Asterisk is used here in the morning session. And then by, uh, by session two, we'll just start to get into some of those technical details, uh, ways we install Asterisk, and then afternoon, we, uh, we really should just be hitting the dial plan. So we'll talk about configuring endpoints. And uh, we'll just be spending most of our time 
actually doing some dial plan scripting through most of the afternoon. Now, uh, like I said, I normally do 9 to 5, so my sessions are kind of, you know, you can see session 2 ends at 11.15, but then there's, you know, lunch ends at 12.15, and so uh, we'll have to figure that out, and uh, maybe somebody can help me keep my time better, but we'll, we'll modify the schedule as we need be. So, let's hop right into the content. Uh, let's talk about what Asterisk is, what it can do, and uh, who is Digium. Like I said, a high-level overview, and we'll just jump right in. When we talk about Asterisk, we say it is an open source communications platform. Okay? And so at a really basic level, if, if, you've, you know, if your friend, if your geeky Linux friend, which hopefully all of us are the geeky Linux friend, that would be the, the cool person. But maybe you've dragged your buddy along who's just not, doesn't even know what Asterisk is. You said, you got to come to this thing, don't even know. At a real basic level, Asterisk is software. You're going to install it on a regular x86 hardware, on a regular server. It's going to turn that server into a, a communication server. Uh, so let's break down each of, these, each of these points here. When we say Asterisk is open source, okay, open source is in contrast to proprietary software. So this is uh, open source is different than, say, Apple or Microsoft, where you have a, a company that has hired developers, software developers, to code all of the code, and then that code is closed off. It's hidden. You don't get to look at it. You don't get to modify it. Um, nobody else gets to contribute or add to it. The company just keeps their own code in a, in a little you know, kind of secluded off ring. Well, open source in contrast means that the very source code, the actual C code that is, uh, is run on the source is, is open for anybody to look at, for anybody to modify, and most importantly, for anybody to contribute. And so there are many open source projects that are, are very popular. Uh, you know, Firefox, if you guys have ever used the Firefox browser, open source software, MySQL, Linux is open source. And, um, <laughs> Not as much these days. What I, what I find is, and I always like to hear your story, so please, let's uh, you know, hang out at lunch, and I'd, I'd love to hear what you guys are doing with Asterisk. And when I have these kind of conversations with people, um, not as much anymore, but sometimes I still hear some resistance, like, yeah, I'm trying to sell, uh, you know, sell the PBX, and people are sometimes hesitant to go with open source. And uh, that's not as true anymore. So these days, a lot more people are a lot warmer, but you know, several years ago, that was the case. Maybe people were a little trepidatious about using open source software. Well, I, one of the you know, ways to overcome that objection, or one thing I like to share, is, is I just like to ask them, well, do you use the internet much? Because if you use the internet much, you're using open source software. And so this is recent data. As, uh, I, I believe I looked at the 2011 data, but I've also looked at the 2012 data. Uh, if you look at um, all of the websites on the internet about uh, 60 percent of those, 60, 65 percent of those, are running on the open source Apache web server. In fact, most of us in this room uh, probably have uh, configured Apache many times. Uh, and so when you think about that, 60 percent of the web is running on open source software. And in fact, if you go to the one million most popular websites, the one million most popular websites, uh, it actually jumps up to like 70, 72 percent of the internet is running on open source software. And so open source software is very reliable. Open source software uh, can be. Of course, that's not a, a blanket claim to all open source software. But the point is that there are many high quality projects like, a, like Apache, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, MySQL, a lot of different flavors of Linux, Debian, Ubuntu, that are, that are very stable, that you can run uh, enterprise code. And asterisk is the case as well, that it is enterprise code. Um, one story I'll share, you know, sometimes uh, people ask Mark Spencer. One time I was hanging out with Mark. We were in a, in a classroom setting. He likes to stop by the classrooms. Uh, if you don't know Mark Spencer, Mark Spencer uh, invent, he's the creator of Asterisk. So when he was a college kid, he needed a PBX system. He said, ah, I might as well write my own, right? Um, so didn't know what he was getting into, but as soon as he got into it, it was a, it was a pretty cool thing. In any case, somebody asked Mark, they're like, Mark, Asterisk is amazing. It's, uh, it's used all over the world. I mean, it's, it's super popular. This, this thing, did you know it would explode like this? And Mark was kind of like, no, I, I didn't. I was actually working on this network protocol analyzer that I thought was going to be really cool. And 
asterisk was just out of necessity. And they, they asked him, would you, going back, do you wish you would have made that proprietary? Do you wish you would have closed source asterisk so you would have, could have made all the money off of it? And what Mark said is absolutely not. And what he would tell you is rather than um, the open source being a detriment to asterisk is the, the reason it's so successful is because it's an open source project. See, asterisk is not Mark Spencer. Mark Spencer wrote some code for asterisk, but so did thousands of other developers. In fact, these guys hanging out here, they're, they're asterisk. Some of you guys in this room that have written code, you guys are asterisk. So there are over thousands of developers all over the world that have contributed maybe just bug patches or major segments of code. And so the idea is this, is when you have open source software and you uh, say, hey, we're opening this up for other people to contribute. Well, then what it does is it, it bears out of necessity. So somebody is in the field, they're using asterisk, and they say, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I had such and such? Well, you know, they've got, they're a C developer, or they've got a developer on staff. They say, I'm just going to write that. I'm going to write that code. And then because I got the code for free, I'm going to contribute that back to the community, and now all the rest of us get to take advantage of that code. And so you see, asterisk has been built on the, you know, by the fingers of thousands of people. And the reason, the reason it is so successful, it is so powerful, it does so many cool things, is actually because it's open source. So that's probably more than I want to talk about that slide. But um, we like that. Of course, when we talk about open source, we uh, say it is a communications platform. And predominantly, we're talking about telephony. So traditional TDM uh, telephony, analog and digital trunks. And in particular, VoIP telephony is uh, asterisk has really helped to drive the uh, the VoIP revolution. But uh, you know the kind of buzz buzz terms these days, uh, you know, unified communications. Asterisk is absolutely a platform by which unified communication systems are are built off of. And so there's uh, ability for calendar integration, uh, IMAP style email. Um, you know where you have what we call just unified messaging, right? So the idea is I've got one inbox, and if I, get a, if I get a voicemail, it goes into a folder, and my red light pops up. And if I delete it from the phone, it deletes it out of my email folder. If I delete it out of my email folder, it deletes it off the phone. It's, it's one unified communication system. And Asterisk is certainly a platform for that. Today, predominantly, we will be talking about uh, telephony, in particular the VoIP telephony components of Asterisk. The, uh, the way Asterisk is most commonly deployed is, is, is as a VoIP PBX. So that's where we'll focus the most. I do need to talk for a moment about the fact that Asterisk is a platform. Okay? And so I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. That is where uh, Digium is headquarters, our headquarters. And you would think, Alabama. When I found out I was moving to Alabama, no offense to anybody else from Alabama, but I was not, not very excited. But um, Huntsville, Alabama is actually a really super cool city. Uh, they actually call it Rocket City. And so it's because uh, you know, NASA has a, a huge um, you know, development going on there. We have Redstone Arsenal. Uh, research Park is actually the second largest research park in the country. So there's tons of technology. I was having dinner with uh, some guys from Germany last night. And uh, they were saying, hey, do you have a lot of engineers in, in Huntsville? I said, yeah, like about 7 in 10 people are engineers. <laughs> They said, man, that sounds like great. I want to move to Huntsville where all the engineers are. In any case, I had to stick a rocket up here. And the idea is, is that Asterisk is a platform at the bottom. So Asterisk, uh, really, you just open it up. It doesn't, it, I don't want to say it doesn't do anything, but it doesn't do anything. It's just a platform. And what you're going to do is you're going to build your solution on top. Okay. So the, uh, the other analogy I have for this is, is really it's like a car and an engine. So Asterisk is the engine inside the car, right? It's up to you to build the car. So this is a, this is a lot of times where um, people who are new to the project kind of get confused. Like sometimes we'll, people will say, well, um, you know, does Asterisk have a GUI? Is there a GUI interface to Asterisk? We say, one, take your pick. There's many, right? And the point is the GUI might be like the windshield or like, you know, the mirrors on the car. Asterisk is the engine. And there's other components that we build on top. And so before we have a fully built rocket, before we have a fully built car, before we have a fully built PBX, there's other work 
that we go into. So today, we're going to get to some of that hard work of uh, looking at what the dial plan scripting is. But not everybody is uh, going to want to go into the dial plan scripting. There are many great distributions of asterisk. Asterisk Now, uh, PBX and a Flash, Elastics. All of these guys are here at Astrocon. And so these are people who have built the entire uh, car, so to speak, or the entire rocket. And you can use that too. Uh, of course, Switchbox. Um, just curious if anybody's in here is using Switchbox. Several guys in here, which is excellent. That is a Digium's uh, SMB turnkey PBX. And so that's like the fully built rocket, or that's like the fully built car. And Asterisk is the engine inside of it. It's kind of like this. If you install an Apache web server, you've installed Apache on your web server, you turn on Apache, and you have absolutely nothing. It doesn't do anything. I mean, that's not really true. But the reality is, you, it's just the server. You don't have any web pages yet. What you need to do is you need to build the web pages for Apache to serve. So over on the left-hand side here, we've got some very simple HTML. And you know, in, a, in the header tag here, it says uh, h1 tag. It says, hello world. And if you put that HTML code on a web page and save it as a .html file and serve it from an Apache server, then all of a sudden you have a web page. It'll say, hello world, which is, and if you're a programmer in the programming world, Hello world, that's kind of always your first script, right? Well, by, uh, by analogy, you know, it's a similar way. Asterisk is kind of similar. You install Asterisk on your system, you turn it on, it's not doing anything yet. You need to write a little bit of code to, uh, to make it work. And so here is a dial plan extension. If you dial extension 100, the channel will be answered. It will wait for one second. And then we'll play back. We'll hear the voice of Allison Smith, who uh, Allison Smith's also hanging out here. Uh, and she'll say, hello, world, and then the channel will hang up. So that's the kind of idea is that Asterisk is an engine. You build things on top. There are solutions available that are you can buy the full car, uh, like Switchbox. Like I said, there's a lot of distributions. There's a lot of other PBX manufacturers. And in fact, hopefully, many of uh, you in the room also have a similar deal. You've perhaps built a solution based on Asterisk, and you're, you're selling the whole turnkey PBX. And Asterisk is the engine. So. Uh, we'll continue on. So some of the characteristics of Asterisk, it is, it is robust code. Uh, Asterisk has been around since 1999. It is a mature, enterprise-capable code. Uh, so you know, perhaps maybe in the early days, you would hear uh, it's not as stable or it's not as mature. These days, Asterisk is very stable. It's very mature. It works very well all the way up to the you know, very high enterprise levels. And of course, especially in the SMB market, um, there's a lot of distributions that, that just will, will work well for you. Uh, Asterisk has a, a global community. It's used all over the world. There's over a million servers in production, the best we can tell. You know, there's, no, there's no phone home code, so we just kind of have to estimate you know, via various uh, mechanisms. But out of estimation, there's over a million servers running Asterisk all over the world. In fact, there was a study. Not super recent. I think, I think this was maybe four years ago, 2008, 2009. Um, anyway, they started to do a study. They said, how many, how many endpoints are hung off, off of systems? And uh, the, the company that did the study um, found out that, that asterisk was actually like number two or three. In fact, there was, there was more endpoints, more phones hung off of asterisk systems all over the world than there was hung off of Cisco. So that gives you a, a, an idea of the scope of how prevalent Asterisk is in the global community, that it's, uh, it's mature code. It is uh, definitely a cool project. And it is supported. There's a, there's a great community of community support. You guys are here at Astrocon, part of the community. Uh, we have you know, forums and some other great things I'll talk about here. And uh, Digium actually offers open source support. So back in the day, uh, we used to have you know, a couple different kinds of asterisks. So you had open source asterisk. And open source was kind of tough to support. And so we created like another system, another edition, you know, the business edition. And the business edition was the one that you could get support on. And you couldn't get support on the open source. Well, these days, we, we don't even have business edition anymore. Now, the regular open source code, the code that you can download from the website for free, you can use that code. Uh, as a platform to build your solution. And you can actually buy support from Digium. You can actually call 
and get, uh, get support. And in fact, we have very high levels of support uh, up until even recently, we've rolled out like an SLA uh, level. Uh, so there's very cool things. It is mature code. It is supported. Um, very cool. So let's talk about a few of the uh, use cases. Uh, people use it as you know traditional PBX, VoIP PBX, uh, all these kind of things, a feature server. We'll just look at a few of these. So this would be an example of uh, you know what we say a VoIP and a TDM hybrid PBX. So uh, the idea here is these, uh, these phones down here are, you know, these would be like regular analog phones, $8 buy it at Walmart phones, and you can connect those to asterisk using a Digium card, or there are lots of other great, uh, you know, folks here that sell cards. Uh, you know, of course, I have the Digium shirt on, and if you guys promise not to tell the other Digium people, I will, I will tell you guys, hey, other people have good cards too. So we have... Uh, you know, Digium cards, I certainly think, are the best. But there are a lot of people that make TDM cards, and lots of them are here. And I encourage you guys to check out their booth, too, uh, because I really feel that as a community, if we're all successful, uh, then the, the Asterisk project is successful. And so the people we're going after is not really other, you know, we're not really competing with other open source, you know, Asterisk developers. We're kind of taking on the proprietary giants, Avaya, Cisco, Shortel. Those are the guys we're going after, and I think there's a huge market for us. And so Digium's got some good cards, and some other people have some good cards. You can connect your card into your Asterisk server here and connect your regular you know, $5 Walmart phone. These would be uh, VoIP telephones. Of course, they're probably Digium phones. And they're connected through over uh, via SIP to the, the PBX here. So Asterisk is, is a hybrid in a sense. It's able to handle VoIP connections. It's able to handle TDM connections. And if uh, an analog phone wants to call the VoIP phone, Asterisk will do the translation. It, that's just fine. Doesn't bother Asterisk at all. And in fact, our links out to the web are, we have, uh, you know, this would be like a T1 PRI or E1 if you know, you're in other places in the world. And uh, the T1 PRI is going to connect out to the PSTN, so public switch telephone network, to make regular phone calls to everybody else. But notice this. Here we've also got like a SIP or an EECS trunk, a VoIP trunk out to the internet. And so imagine that this is your Huntsville office, and imagine that this is your San Diego office, right? Well, this call that goes over the internet, you've uh, essentially done a toll bypass. You're not, you, the only thing you're paying for there is bandwidth, right? So if you imagine this call going through the PSTN, You've got you've to pay your, your telco, you've got to pay your carrier per, per call, right? Per minute, usually. Uh, but here, you know, Asterisk is able to, to send VoIP over the internet, and, you know, I mean, it's probably going over an MPLS or, or VPN or some other way to uh, encrypt that traffic. But the point is that's kind of very exciting. And in fact, that's one of the ways that people use Asterisk. So if you imagine these are legacy PBX systems, this is a very common use of Asterisk. It's one of the things that made, has made Astra so popular is, you know, uh, here I am in the enterprise and I've got a legacy PBX. I've got a PBX that maybe only does TDM. Uh, so here I've got a T1 trunk out to the PSTN and I've connected these analog phones. But I don't, I don't want to connect directly to the PSTN. I want to kind of avoid those toll calls. So what we've done here is, is we've put asterisk in front of the legacy PBX. And so asterisk, because it's able to translate between VoIP and TDM, it's able to take in that T1 PRI and translate it to SIP and shoot it out SIP out to the internet so that calls between the two offices are free. And we can even still make calls out to the PSTN uh, by going through an ITSP, or an Internet Telephony Service Provider. And so uh, is anybody in the room either work for an ITSP or starting an ITSP or do that as a business? You guys will, uh, OK, several guys. We. Um, you guys will meet several guys that are, uh, this is actually a common use of asterisk. So probably uh, this is your system on premise, but probably the guys in the ITSP are also running asterisk. So very common use of it there. Uh, another way people use asterisk sometimes just as a feature server. So oftentimes, uh, you know, this is the, the legacy PBX or the proprietary PBX. And as you guys all kind of know, if, if you say to them, well, you know, we're on your system. And we really want conferencing. And they're like, oh, great, conferencing. That will only cost you $10,000 per conference room. And 
uh, you're like, ah, shoot, I really want a conference server, I really need a conference server, I really don't want to pay this outrageous licensing fee. Well, just connect over a, a SIP or TDM or whatever kind of trunk over to Asterisk, and Asterisk will just sit over here on the side just fine, uh, functioning as the, uh, as the conference server, as a feature server. And in fact, this is how I uh, personally got involved in the Asterisk project. So. Uh, I was, you know, I was a PBX admin, basically. I was, you know, working IT. And we had a, we had a legacy system. We had an, this NEC system. And, you know, it was kind of like any other legacy PBX. We, uh, most of our entire building was all on uh, TDM, was all analog. And we wanted to move to VoIP. And so we got, we got some VoIP phones. We got some SIP phones that were supposed to be compliant with my NEC PBX. And uh, the NEC PBX actually did SIP. And so we did all the configurations. We got everything locked in there. And we flipped the switch. And nothing. We could not, we could not get these SIP phones to register to, uh, to the NEC. And we're like pulling our, what's going on? I'm looking through documentation. I'm like trying to figure out, are my configurations wrong, whatever. We finally, we call our, uh, you know, we call a representative. And we say, hey, what's, what's going on here? Why? Doesn't the SIP phone work? They looked at all the configs. They said, oh, all the configs are fine. They said, no, the problem is, is you uh, don't have any licenses. You need, if you just pay us $100,000, then your SIP phones will work. That's all it took. So that made it a very easy solution for us to say, well, let's go to Asterisk, where you don't have to pay per channel. And in fact, at the time, Asterisk was running just like this. I had my uh, NEC PBX, and hung off of it was the asterisk voicemail server. That's all it was. Asterisk was the voicemail server. And uh, you know, the guy who was kind of in charge said, well, hey, doesn't asterisk, won't that do SIP calls? Well, yeah, we can, do, we can do SIP calls on that. We can do SIP endpoints. And pretty soon, the voicemail server just kind of took over and, and became the whole PBX. So another common use of asterisk. Uh, I told you guys we talk about Mark, uh, who is Digium. This is a picture of Mark Spencer. So you guys will see uh, Mark hanging out. Uh, like I said, he started Digium uh, when he was a college kid. Really, at the time, he was uh, brokering Linux support. So at the time, people would have a, you know, their Linux box, and they would need some tech support for that. And there, there wasn't a lot of tech support options. So you know, kind of brilliant guy said, hey, well, give me a call. And I've got a bunch of buddies that know how to troubleshoot Linux. And we'll, uh, we'll get you some support. So he was doing this kind of off his cell phone. So somebody would call him on his cell phone and say, hey, I need some Linux support. He said, OK, hang on a sec. Give me your number. Someone will call you back. And then he'd hang up, and he'd call one of his buddies and say, hey, call this number and give them support. And it, you know, it just wasn't very manageable. It, he really needed a PBX. And out of that need, that's what kind of arose the need for asterisk. And so uh, like I said, he wrote the code. And uh, it, we used to be called Linux Support Services, but you know, became Digium. It says 150 employees. I think around these days, we might have 175, 180. Um, but you'll notice Digium, man, we're a pretty small company. If you, if you think about this, for a global PBX used all over the world, crazy amazing software, we're, we're a pretty small company. How does this work? Well, it works because of you guys. It works because of the community. It works because of, of this event. Because there's so many people that have bought into and contributed and are the Asterisk project. Uh, and so, um, Sometimes people will ask me things like, uh, you know, I'm sure maybe a question will come in. Hey, when, are, when, are you, when is Digium going to put product X into asterisk, whatever feature X is? And the answer is, well, pro we're probably not going to put it in because it's not our product. So I mean, we're uh, the shepherds of the project. We're the stewards of the code. But you guys are the asterisk project. So like I said, it's, it's an open source project. There's developers all over the world. And that's really how the code gets made. It's a very different model uh, than having a product. And of course, Digium does have products. So if you want to ask me when a certain feature is coming into the phones, you know, we, we put features into our phones. Uh, Switchbox, which is our SMB PBX, our turnkey fully built car. Uh, in Switchbox, we have features. We put features in the Switchbox. That's a product. Asterisk isn't really a product. It's a project. It's an engine. So uh, what makes it work is all of us together. Um, just really quickly, uh, Digium as a company, we basically have this uh, twofold mission. 
And this here's a picture of the Switchbox PBX. Uh, the idea here is, you know, as, as, Switch, as Digium, we really just want to try to walk this line of being good shepherds of the code. Asterisk is the number one open source PBX platform uh, in the world. The number one, by, and by a large margin, out of the open source uh, PBX market, Asterisk has like over 90% of that market, and then everybody else is, is the remaining 10%. So Asher is the number one open source uh, platform. It has been for 10 years. And our goal and our heart is that it would be the number one for the next 10 years. And so we really want to shepherd that open source code. We really want uh, to be a attractional to developers, attractional to integrators, uh, attractional to, to business people that are, are going to sell PBX solutions based on Asterisk and make this all successful together. And of course, at the same time, we got to do something to keep the lights on, right? So Digium also is a, is a company that sells products. So of course, we have Digium phones. Uh, we do training and support. Um, and so we have a few products. What I'll do is I'll, I'll show you guys. Hopefully, you guys will kind of forgive the, uh, a little bit of marketing for two slides here. And uh, what I won't show you is I, I won't show you all of our products. So Digium has a lot of products. And I won't show you all of them. But I'll show you some that we have specifically created to help you out. And that's kind, of, that's kind of where our heart is, is we say, out of the products that we make, we want to shepherd the open source code, and we want to make products based on that code and to help others make products based on that code. So one of the things, like I said, is Switchbox, which is our SMB turnkey PBX. Uh, I will just tell you guys this. Some of you guys are sitting in this room, and uh, you came to find out about Asterisk, but the reality is that Switchbox or another turnkey PBX is going to, that's really the best solution for you. So uh, the trade-off here, there's always, a, there's always a trade-off, right? So certainly, asterisk open source code is freely downloadable. You can get on the website. You can download it for free. But there's still a cost involved, right? The cost is in your development time, is in building the car, right? So if you have the knowledge, and you have the skill, and you have the time, you can build a car. In fact. If you want to help get that knowledge, you can come to an asterisk training class. We'll train you to get the knowledge, and you can, you can put the time in and build your solution. And that's actually going to work for a, a many of you in this room. Uh, and that's uh, going to be the, the best for you is to pay the cost in time. For others in this room, uh, maybe the time is much more of a commodity. What's going to be more valuable to you is not to use the asterisk engine, but to buy a product that already has the engine installed. And so like I said, Switchbox is SMB PBX. There are many others here at Astrocon. Uh, of course, you know, I think Switchbox is the best. But there are, are many to choose from. And that's going to be the best solution for you, because you're going to be able to, to, to resell a, an already made SMB PBX. And that way, you don't have to put in the development time. But you're going to be able to reap all the benefits, this kind of flexibility and the power of that asterisk engine. Some other, uh, some other stuff that we make, things that would probably be helpful to you are, uh, you know, up here we've got telephony cards. So like I said, if you want to connect to the PSTN, we've got analog cards and digital cards. And like I said, there are many card manufacturers here. This is a picture of our octal card. So that's got uh, four T1s off of one card, which is kind of nice. Uh, this is a SIP to TDM gateway. So this is kind of one of our new products. And it's, it's pretty exciting for me. I've already heard some kind of like, uh, you know, initial feedback from folks that, that uh, this, is, this kind of scratches the itch. So this is a, uh, a, a TDM to SIP gateway. And what's really nice about it is many PBXs are VoIP only. So it's, uh, it's, it's nice when we want to deal with the network. When you start getting into the, the TDM stuff, that's a lot more hairy. So we would like to deal as much as possible in VoIP. And a lot of deployments are VoIP only. But you still got to connect to the PSTN uh, for whatever reason. And so you really want to get a PRI link. Well, the gateway, it's built on asterisk. It has uh, you know, really easy GUI configuration. And so a lot of people like these little boxes that we just came out with because they can stick it in front of their, their VoIP only PBX and it gives them a, a TDM connection out to the PSTN. Uh, of course, I mentioned you know, open source support earlier and courses and certifications. And so in fact, uh, the DCAP certification that is the de facto certification that measures you know, competence with asterisk within the asterisk community. 
stands for Digium uh, Certified Asterisk Professional. And if, if you're here and you'd like to uh, take the DCAP test, there's actually, we have a room set up for that. And so you can actually even register to take the DCAP test here at Astrocon or at one of our training classes. Uh, but, you know, that's basically the, the what asterisk is and what it does. And let me see if, if my uh, system will set up here for me. Let's take a look at this. Okay, so. Uh, I guess we've got no cell service, but I did get a couple tweets. I'll, uh, I'll pop those up. So uh, we have someone who's a technology consultant looking for SIP-based audio video intercom solution. Okay, We've got some brand new resellers. And Verizon has service, so we have an Asterisk integrator. So uh, my script is still running. If you guys uh, have questions about just those kind of basics, what Asterisk it is, who Digium is, see if you can shoot in a, a text or a tweet. And uh, let me just check here. We'll check the pound Asterisk. Astrocon, or no, actually, we'll check out pound uh, asterisk one, two, three. Don't know if anyone's using Twitter, but we'll find out here in a moment, of course, depending on how uh, good the Wi-Fi connection is. No tweets yet, uh, but if you guys, like I said, if you guys want to call in or uh, text or tweet in if you guys have service, and what I'll do is I'll pop into the next module here, and then I'll take a little bit more extended questions, and we'll, we'll do some live questions as well. Hello.